Welcome to this special edition of Global Teleclass. I'm Jeffrey Hoppe, and joining me tonight is my wife and partner, Linda Benio. Well, welcome to everyone. This is our second time on Global Teleclass, and we're really excited about it. And good, and, and I'd say this is a special edition because tonight we're going to talk about spiritual awakening. You know, it's a subject that's near and dear to Linda and I. We travel all around the world and we meet thousands of people that are going through a spiritual awakening. It's one of the most challenging processes that a person will ever go through, and yet it's one of the most beautiful and profound experiences. Spiritual awakening is really what you've been waiting for, and yet if you don't understand what's happening, you might just think that you're going crazy. The spiritual awakening is a totally, completely natural process. Yet there's a human tendency to want to tinker with it, to try to fix it, to think that something's going wrong, or to think, worse than anything else, that you're doing something wrong. Tonight we're going to talk about spiritual awakening, what it is, what are some of the experiences and some of the side effects, and what you should know about it. We have a lot of material to cover in this one hour together, so let's get on with it. We're excited tonight that you're here, and we'd like to know where you're from. So we'd like to invite you, if you would please, to send an e to go to speak.angel at gmail.com, and in the subject line of your email, please put your country, state, and city. So that's send an email to speak, S-P-E-A-K dot angel, A-N-G-E-L, at gmail.com and in the subject state your country state and city we would love to see where you're from and we're excited to be here and uh, linda just let me verify that speak dot angels isn't that correct plural that's correct angels it's, i'm sorry it is speak dot angels plural yeah speak dot angels at gmail.com that's correct and that'll also let us know that this uh line is really working that uh, that there's actually listeners out there and according to Global Teleclass, I think there was going to be over 2,000 listeners tonight. So uh, let's actually just take a moment and take a deep breath, bring all this energy together. I know we have people listening in from all over the world and all sharing a common experience of going through a spiritual awakening. I actually heard from someone from Romania this afternoon. I was a little touched and it actually made me a little nervous to realize we really do have people tuning in from all over. It's such an amazing surprise. And already we're getting people coming in saying they're from India, they're from states all over the Union. It's pretty stunning already to see where people are coming from. So I'll try to calm down. Okay, great. And actually a little bit later we can go back. But if you would just send us a quick email in the subject line, just put your city, state, country, uh, and send that to speak.angels at gmail.com. Uh, one other quick thing before we dive in. Um, in this program, we're not trying to sell anything. This is truly about the consciousness of awakening, and we don't want to disrupt that with any sales or any offers or anything like that. Uh, there is something, though. We've put together some free products. If you, if you want to listen or read them, they're on our website at www.crimsoncircle.com backslash free and these are only for listeners tonight and they're totally free there's some really good information in there one of the um, uh, free downloads that we normally charge for is about depression it was a channeled session we did with Tobias a few years ago and he talks in depth about what depression is uh, how it affects a person and and what's really going on uh, there's also a beautiful thing from Tobias called letter to awakening humans which I think everybody tonight might find interesting. Uh, another piece called 12 Signs of Your Awakening Divinity. These are all totally free on the Crimson Circle website at www.crimsoncircle/free. There's just a real brief thing we ask you to fill out uh, with your email address. We don't sell this or give it to anybody. It just allows us to keep track of who's listening. And uh, also, uh, as we'll explain later in this show, we're going to do a special either 90 or 120 minute follow up session sometime in August where we'll take uh, questions from everybody listening in. Tonight, we're going to be giving background information, but we'll do a special follow up session 
on the Crimson Circle website. It'll be like a, a webcast in August, and that way we'll be able to send you a notification. So let's jump into the subject, spiritual awakening. Uh, just as a little bit of background, uh, Linda and I started the Crimson Circle in 1999. Uh, at that time, I had the beautiful pleasure of working with an angel by the name of Tobias. And Linda and I both spent a lot of time talking to, working with Tobias. And these messages from Tobias uh, caused us to start the Crimson Circle. We left the business world in 2001 and devoted our full time to traveling around the world, to uh, channeling Tobias and, and later Adama St. Germain. And the Crimson Circle has since grown into an incredible international affiliation of awakening humans. Uh, we have the information translated onto 23 international websites. There are several books on the market that we've written. And of course, there's thousands of free pages of information about new energy on our website. And the reason why I mention this tonight is that through our travels, which is well over 100,000 miles a year, <clears throat> um, we've met tens and thousands of people from Korea to Austria, Israel to Colombia, Germany, Finland, uh, Japan, just about anywhere you, you can mention. We've had the pleasure of meeting people, and the one thing that they really have in common is that they're all going through a spiritual awakening. You know, that's, it's that's the piece that over and over that, that we've had uh, amazing experience that in all the different cultures, in all the different places, there's still this, this common thing where we see people coming together truly, really having this spiritual awakening. And they often want to come together and meet together to meet people also going through these kinds of experiences. So it's been really a pleasure and a joy for us to to meet with and talk to and share the experiences from humans uh, who are truly going through a spiritual awakening. So I guess it really begs the question, what is a spiritual awakening? Well, a spiritual awakening is a process of going beyond the boundaries of your body and mind and consciously reconnecting with your soul self, or you may call it your true self or your spirit, but consciously reconnecting with your with your source while you're still in human body while you're still going through the experiences in a physical body in a lifetime on earth could i make an i'd like to make an invitation you know some of there are a lot of people logging in and there are people we know and many many new people and i'd like to invite you to just take a deep breath and if you're new and you haven't heard you know much about the crimson circle and some of the, the things that we do I invite you to just let go of, of being too stuck on defining words and just allow yourself to take a step back and feel what we're talking about and not let the words be a distraction. You know, sometimes we have labels for things and we, we invite you to just release that. That's good, yeah, because everybody uses something different. They might call it spirit or higher self or true self or whatever, but it's, I guess you could really say it's, it's the God within. So spiritual awakening, again, is the process of going beyond the boundaries of body and mind, consciously connecting with the God within. It moves you beyond the identification that you've had with your human aspect into an awareness, uh, an expansive awareness of the I am or of the source. And, you know, we really tend to identify ourselves as as the human, as the the name on our driver's license as the incarnation that we're in in this lifetime. And that becomes our identity and there's this, um, uh, there's this propensity to want to solidify that identity, to make that identity bigger and, and grander. But in the spiritual awakening, it actually is about rebalancing the identity, putting it back into balance with source, with your I am, with your, with your inner self. And it's interesting that, that we've learned over the years of traveling and meeting people that a spiritual awakening is, it's really not a religious thing. It's not about getting religion. Uh, we've met a lot of people who are very, very religious, but don't, haven't necessarily started into a true spiritual awakening. 
a spiritual awakening isn't, isn't just New Age, just because you might happen to be New Age or read a lot of New Age books or even go to channelings, doesn't necessarily mean that you're having a spiritual awakening. And a spiritual awakening is not philosophical. It's, it's, uh, it's actually the best way to say it is beyond words. There is a tendency to want to get very philosophical, esoterical, religious, or, or even spiritual, uh, using a lot of phrases and cliches and things like that. But you know, uh, we've actually discovered that the spiritual awakening really transcends all that. It's not religious, not New Age, not philosophical. It is a deeply, deeply personal process. It's a deeply inward experience. The labels sometimes de actually defy what it really is. The, the labels actually cause us to fall into a mental process that actually can tend to, to make it more difficult to really be in that, in that oneness, that soulfulness. And you know, we, we've also found that most people who are experiencing a true awakening uh, may consider themselves spiritual but not religious, but actually most of the people tend to not really want to affiliate with any particular religion or uh, spiritual concept because they are boxes and really what's happening in a, spirit, in a true spiritual awakening is that you're going beyond the boxes, uh, you're going beyond the rhetoric and beyond the dogma. It gets confusing then because Part of you wants a description for it. Part of you wants uh, meaning or human mental understanding of what you're going through. But the reality is it goes beyond the understanding that your mind and even your experiences currently have. It's going beyond anything that you've experienced or thought or have been taught or learned up to this point. Therefore, it can be very challenging, it can be very confusing, but it's actually an incredibly beautiful process. Let's talk for just a moment. Uh, oh, Linda, would you mind just real quickly, uh, you're on your laptop computer and people are sending in emails. Where, where are some of the emails coming from? Oh where are goodness. some of the listeners? It's just stunning. It's from everywhere uh, I see. Portugal, India, someone in transit from in London, uh, Costa Rica, every state in the Union, Mexico, the United States, I mean, uh, Mexico, and um, uh, uh, Canada, Finland. Uh, really so from all over the world. Oh, it's just touching. Oh, I, I can't, I got to mention Slovenia and Hungary <laughs> and, and, you know, many people that we don't know. And of course, some dear friends sending winks and smiles. Good. So uh, if we have time at the end of the, the program, we'll, we'll uh, talk about a few more. But uh, let's talk right now about kind of, and I'm over, going to oversimplify here, uh, but how this all works. Okay, first point. You came to Earth many, many lifetimes ago. You, you descended from your angelic energy. You took on physical reality. You took on the birth and incarnation process. All is a way for really for your soul, for your source to expand and fulfill and to experience. You, you came here, it was a choice. It wasn't uh, that any of us were fallen angels or dark angels. It wasn't that we took a wrong turn when we were uh, going past the Milky Way and ended up here on Earth. It was an absolute choice at a deep soul level to come to Earth to experience physical reality, to, to experience an, ourselves as an expression of God in physical form. Through these many, many experiences of lifetimes on earth, we've gained incredible insights. You've gained incredible insights into your spirit, into yourself, into yourself as a creator. You've learned amazing things about what it's like to be in a physical body, what it's like to have the, the uh, limitations of time and space, what it's like to, to have emotions. And it, it was actually a, a beautiful, beautiful choice. Through these experiences of many lifetimes, we developed something, and I may not pronounce this right, uh, it's called Hehram, Hehram. 
This was a word that uh, Adama St. Germain gave me recently, Ram. And what this is, is these are feelings of guilt, separation, unfulfilled desires, wounds, uh, all these types of uh, emotions and feelings. Well, this thing that he calls Ram create the, the need or the desire or kind of like a, almost like a pull to come back yet again for other lifetimes on earth for resolution. Not for punishment, uh, not because we're, we're trapped, but we come back again for resolution of these things that ha have kept us in this um, cycle of lifetimes on earth. And again, it's a term that Adama St. Germain gave me recently called ha ram. Uh, to me, it sounds a little bit like karma, but he says it's, it's kind of different. Through these experiences of many, many, many lifetimes, we also develop strong connections for a love of other people, a love for earth, a love for physical reality. So we have all of these factors that are, that are keeping us uh, here on earth that are having us incarnate over and over again. Well, at a certain point after many, many lifetimes, there's like a trigger inside. Uh, in a way, you could say that your I am awareness or your source awareness starts to become suffocated and stifled and, and bored. Actually, one of the things about uh, the awakening is the, the sense of boredom. E even if you're living in, in a lot of chaos, there's a sense of boredom. Because the I am awareness starts to get bored and disconnect, discontent. It's actually trying to find a way out. It knows it's time to let go of all of these incarnations on earth. Well, years ago, Tobias, who was an angel that we worked with uh, up until July last year, Tobias said that we actually kind of planted or put a, a, a release mechanism into our consciousness. Uh, he called it the fruit of the rose. And Really what this was, was a, it was actually a signal or a reminder to each and every one of us on a very personal level that it's time. It's time to let go of, of the karma. It's time to let go of the repeated lifetimes on earth. It's time to awaken. It's time to blossom. So Tobias called this the fruit of the rose and said it's within every one of us because we kind of knew that there was the potential to get lost or uh, to forget who we really are once we started incarnating on earth. So we were, as angels, we were wise enough to put in this, this uh, release mechanism or this reminder, the fruit of the rose. So at some point, uh, we come to, to this inner decision. It may not be conscious or mental, but an inner decision that it's time. Time to get off the karmic incarnation merry-go-round. Is it a realization somehow? This 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 awareness that we, you know, that we all go through this. It, it it's a, it's a it's a funny stage. It's it's a, an amazing. Yeah, and and based on talking to a lot of people, and and each Linda and I going through our own personal experience, this this is the 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 beginning of the conscious awakening in this lifetime. Now, your awakening process might have started lifetimes ago when you started studying religion or um, studying philosophy or even arts, but what you're talking about, Linda, is, is actually the beginning of conscious awakening in this lifetime. Okay. It's been brewing for a long time. It's, it's been there. Uh, you might have even had some type of agreement before you came into this lifetime with yourself that this would be the lifetime of conscious awakening and then then something generally happens that kind of that first sign something happens to bring your consciousness into focus of the awakening process mm -hmm. we've heard many many different stories along the way uh, of the uh, kind of the first sign and in it it's as varied as there are different people we know people who say that they were in a bookstore and a book literally jumped off the shelf uh, and uh, they went to pick it up and ended up buying it. 
and it was something that inspired them. I know from my standpoint, uh, uh, I read a book, uh, The Cryin' uh, Book One by Lee Carroll, which was an absolute uh, eye-opener, um, ins- inspiration for me. Right. We've talked to people who have been surfing on the web, um, not related to anything spiritual necessarily, and suddenly found themselves on a spiritually oriented website, whether it was Crimson Circle or Cryon or uh, Steve Rother's Lightwork or any of the others, and they had no idea how they got there, but uh, this was kind of the, the, the first sign. You know, it also happens when people have an emotional crisis, such as the death of a loved one, uh, a divorce, uh, a loss of a, of a career job, because that type of thing represents a turning point where they they start taking a look at their life and suddenly they're into this awakening process. And also something like a physical trauma, car accident, a near-death experience, getting a disease or cancer or something like that are often also that first true sign of awakening, of of opening up because it, it gets you to stop what you, the, the groove or the rut that you're in with your regular human life and start to consider that there's so much more to who you really are. So this is actually, it's not necessarily a celebration. We're, we're noticing all the time that this is quite the opposite. It's actually something that makes, makes one take pause and, and look, look, look at things twice. It's not, it's not like it's a celebration. You know, it, it not usually. Usually it's something that kind of stops you in your tracks, right. uh, really gets you out of that. You know, we, we get into such modes or ruts, you know, getting up at the same time each day, eating the same thing for breakfast, going to the same job. Well, these experiences tend to be uh, uh, kind of eye-openers. Right. Now, we've also talked to people who literally have had an angel visit them in the middle of the night, uh, had people who were taking a walk through the forest and suddenly um, heard music uh, where no, there really wasn't any any source of the music. Uh, so there's a wide variety of different things. And to all the listeners tonight, your experience is very, very personal to you. And maybe it didn't happen in an abrupt way. Maybe it happened over over several years of time. But uh, there's there's generally something you can probably go back to, to say, ah, that 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 was the time where my life took a change. It's a very personal very, very personal thing. It's not, there isn't a single way. There, there are many, many ways that people open to this is what we're saying. And, and you know, I've never met anybody that said, gee, I'm going to go search for an awakening or right. I'm going to have an right. awakening because, because that type of consciousness or that thought comes from the human self and not from the true inner awareness. So uh, I don't know anybody who's ever said, I'm going to deliberately set out on my awakening. It just kind of happens, and then it starts unfolding. Part of the problem is that a lot of people don't really realize at that moment what's going on. They don't understand that it's an awakening, and there tends to be panic or uh, fear. And, you know, one of my passions and, and Linda's passion is to help so many people around the world who are going through awakening to understand what it is, to understand that it's a beautiful process, but it's also extremely transformational. So here you are, the the awakening process has started, the transformation begins, and your life starts to change. You know, it's kind of like it's similar to a caterpillar going into the cocoon on its way to becoming a butterfly. You know, can you imagine the, the, the caterpillar, you know, big, fat, green, 16 or 18 legged caterpillar and uh, one day suddenly starts uh, falling apart st- suddenly starts uh, going into this cocoon and turning into into mush can you imagine in its caterpillar mind the fear that it might be encountering the questioning itself what did i do wrong i you know i should have gone to church more often i should have prayed more often but if this caterpillar could just realize that it's going through a beautiful transformation on its way to becoming a beautiful multicolored butterfly that can fly through the sky. 
but the caterpillar can't even conceive of it because it's in caterpillar mind. I think that's always probably the most appropriate analogy for so many of us. Yeah. And as we're going through it, we kind of are like caterpillar. We're, we're going through this process that seems to be turning us to mush or turning us inside out. And, and there, there's a lot of fear involved and there's a lot of questioning and a lot of trying to go backwards rather than to allow this natural process to go forward. It's a very, very private process. And, and that, again, I think is what create some of the discomfort and some of the challenges with the process because it's so personal, so personal to the individual. And it's not an easy thing to share or to, to, to do with a lot of people. It's, it's truly internal and, and a private process, personal process. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, the, the parts of this process and one of the most difficult parts is that you will eventually expand beyond your human mind. That's difficult because the human mind has been what's been controlling things and managing things and analyzing and directing everything. But literally in, in an awakening process, you're going to end up going out of your mind. Uh, and that's a good thing, Linda, and, uh, and listeners. That's a good thing because the human mind, is as wonderful as it is, it's a limiting factor. As you expand beyond the, the human mind and the human way of thinking, as you expand beyond the brain, you suddenly get into connection with your, whatever you want to call it. And here we have that label issue again, but it's your divine intelligence. Uh, it's your, what Tobias called your nost. It's, it's the grander you and it doesn't, this I am, this divine intelligence, it doesn't work like the mind. It doesn't do the same type of analyzing and judging. It doesn't have the same processes. It's, it's very, very different. Uh, it's, for one thing, it's extremely creative, but in a creative way you may not have experienced before. The going beyond the mind it doesn't, you don't have the same logic. It actually, this divine intelligence really isn't logic. It's more of a natural knowingness. You don't, in the, in the divine intelligence, you actually don't have to think about things. It suddenly becomes a knowingness about things. You don't even have to, in the divine intelligence, you don't have to wonder about what comes next because you're content that it's absolutely appropriate. So, so this is a very important point that in the awakening, you're going to be going through an experience of going beyond the mind. And, and that can be difficult, frustrating, fearful, and everything else. Well, we do talk about, are you going crazy or, you know, is it a spiritual awakening? And this lack of discomfort and this very demanding, extremely uh, important process does make you wonder and doubt so many things and, and reconsider so many things. Absolutely. And, and also in awakening, you're going to discover what it's like to feel again. Now we could do a whole show just on, on feeling. We're not talking here about emotions, but we're talking about sensory awareness consciousness, awareness. It's amazing for us to meet people who have shut down their feelings, their, their awareness of things. They've kind of packed in and uh, boxed up their, their natural sensory awareness. Uh, the mind has taken over in a way, but they're not really feeling energy anymore. There's energy everywhere. There's angels with us right now. And when you open the feeling, you, you're aware that they're there. So that's another thing. You're going to be opening your feeling. Sometimes it's confused with emotion, but emotions, actually, um, it was Adamas who said, emotions are the mind's attempt to have feeling or awareness. Uh, they're truly not a thing of our spirit nature. Emotions are very human and, and actually, ultimately, very mental. So another point, while you're going through awakening, 
your body's natural rejuvenation system is going to activate itself. The body has the the hundred percent ability to heal and rejuvenate itself without any therapies, medications, uh, anything else. It can do it. It's been locked up for a long time. It's been suppressed. And during the awakening, the body's natural rejuvenation systems are going to activate. It sounds wonderful, but you can imagine uh, while it's doing that and while you're also starting to rewire your DNA, you can imagine the physical stress or the physical change that it's going to take place. There's going to be physical things that happen to you that um, you may consider unpleasant or uncomfortable, but actually it's your body just reworking and changing itself. As we mentioned at the beginning of the show, the awakening is going beyond the limitations or the boundaries of the body and the mind. So when you have all these physical effects and you have these mental symptoms, it's actually quite natural. That's that's the good news. Also, one other it thing. It doesn't feel that way. Um, we'll get to the, in the moment it doesn't, but we'll get to that in, in just a little bit. But uh, the other thing uh, in this awakening process, the other thing that's happening is your awareness and consciousness of of your spirit, of your I am of your inner self is starting to blossom. That's probably the biggest, the best of all the, the piece I love the most. Yeah, you, 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 you start becoming aware and conscious of your spirit. And it's so real. And it's, and it's interesting because you're not going to find it out there. You're not going to find it in somebody else or in a book or on a website. Uh, those things can all be nice tools along the way, but what you're really doing is coming into an awareness and consciousness of your of your spirit, of your self. And it's such an unexpected beauty. I, I don't want to define it for anyone else. I can only define it for me, but it wasn't screaming and fireworks. It was just beauty and grace and an opening and an expansion that just felt it. It wasn't looking for it. It wasn't anything that I could have made happen. It just, there was a space for it to happen, for me to allow it to happen. And I know so many of us have been through that. So here you are, here we all are, in the awakening and life changes. As I just mentioned, you're going to feel it in your mind. You're going to experience it in your body. Even even your creativity takes uh, on a whole different um, nature, a whole different way of expressing uh, it. The creativity, your natural creativity, uh, not something you learned in school, or but your natural creativity starts coming into uh, an, into expression in the now moment, and it starts actually coming into a very interesting balance with your logic and your mind and and your body. So, you, if you can imagine all these forces going on at one time, your DNA is rewiring itself, everything going on. No wonder sometimes that awakening can be a bit challenging. And again, that, that sense of, of expanded awareness is the piece that just keeps unfolding, keeps allowing. And you can't, you can't I can't imagine going backwards on that. No, no, it's, uh, well, I don't think you could anyway. But <laughs> So the one thing that Linda and I really want to share with everybody tonight is that this awakening, which is not religious, not spiritual, not New Age, it is the reconnection or the conscious connection with your I am, with your source, with yourself. It's all going to work out. It is a natural process. It really is going to work out. This, it's not a test. Uh, you, you almost can't make the wrong turns. You can't do the wrong thing, but you can you can definitely do some things that are going to make it more uncomfortable. You got all this stuff going on, and Linda and I just want to chat for a moment here about some of the symptoms, some of the things that are maybe going on with you, uh, have been going on with a lot of people, but just so you understand, you're not alone in this process. These are These are things that happen. So here you are in this amazing, beautiful awakening. 
And, you know, I think we'd all like to have angels singing and bells ringing and floating on clouds and everything. But the reality is there's some stuff going on in your physical reality on earth. For one thing, body aches and pains like never before. And it's not just because you're getting old. You get body aches and pains, particularly in the shoulders and the back. Uh, the reason for this is, uh, again, we could do a whole show on it, but the energy in your body is now starting to flow in different ways. It's not just following the same old patterns of the way it used to flow. And that, that relates to everything from your organs, your blood, as, as well as uh, prana energy, kundalini, uh, spirit energy, or whatever you want to call it. It's flowing different. And it's going to tend to get blocked up in the areas right now where you have some um, some other blockages, particularly when it tries to move from the lower portions of your body up through the, the head and up beyond the head. It tends to get blocked in the shoulders and the back. Uh, a lot of times because people get very mental about the awakening process. Next thing, um, a big thing that we've a lot of people have experienced is a change in relationships. Suddenly, all the relationships uh, with your friends, with your family members, with your spouse, uh, with people you've known for years starts to change. Well, I guess that's natural because because you're changing also. Your connection with other people, your connection with with the physical reality is changing. Those relationships tend to change also because at a very deep level, you're letting go of a lot of the old karma that's connected you with them. Now, the bad news is that sometimes it's very, very difficult, challenging to have people go out of your life or, or for you to go out of theirs. The good news is that you're releasing them from karma and we found in so many cases that while sometimes you feel you're losing the relationship, a lot of times it comes back in a whole new way. In it an, creates itself. Absolutely. In a non-karmic way. Well, it's a challenge too that, that some people, when you start to go through that change and you start to go through that process, some people just aren't open to it. Some people can feel the changes. It makes them uncomfortable. And it does create bumps and, and hiccups in relationships that, that evolve. And as you say, a lot of times they can even, sometimes they go away, sometimes they recreate. But when you let go of the karma and that's all that's there, that might be the end of the relationship. Here's another one that we found to be very, very common, a change in your job or career. Uh, this is one that I personally experienced uh, along the way. Um, and again, it's natural. A lot of people either just suddenly get discontent with their job that they've had for years and years and they walk out or they find themselves uh, with a pink slip. Uh, in other words, they're, they're relieved of duties. They're fired. It's, it's very, very disconcerting, particularly if you've been relying on a paycheck and, and relying on that salary. And even if you didn't like that job, suddenly you find yourself in a situation where you're saying, what am I going to do? Again, this is natural because that job was really one of the things that kept you in that rut, that kept you, that kept you stuck. And now uh, your, your entire being is being shaken up um, in, in every way, your job, your relationship, and everything else. This is really um, time to take a deep breath. It's going to work out. It's really going to work out. Uh, we'll get into some of those uh, details in just a moment, but uh, I want to, Linda and I want to continue going through some of the things that we've found to be uh, uh, very common. I'm going to try to, to talk a little less because I really want to make sure that we get through this because it's a really incredible topic, but a lot of material. But, you know, there's, there's so many of these things, and, you know, one of the ones that I think can be the very hardest is this feeling of being alone, even when you're surrounded by lots of other people. That loneliness, whether you're with people or away from people, is, is daunting and, and I found it sad at times. It, ki it kind of hurt and it's a, there's a longing that comes with that. 
And what we're talking about here, of course, are some of the side effects or the symptoms of awakening. But these tend to be the things that people worry about or get anxiety about and say, what's happening? Well, we've found in talking with people all around the world, these are common, these are natural. Uh, it's part of a process. And, and these things pass, by the way. I can, we can tell you from personal experience. So as Linda said, the feeling of being alone, even if you're surrounded by other people, you're energetically disconnecting from your old identity, your old karma, your old self. So suddenly there are times when you're going to feel very, very alone, even if there's a lot of other people around. Another one that's very, very common is loss of passion. Loss of passion. This is also the loss of meaning or purpose or hope in your life. Because a lot of times the passion that you had in the past was was um, human, more human oriented. That passion, uh, that purpose just doesn't have the same meaning that it does anymore. You might have, uh, maybe before your passion was um, volunteering at the local center or it might have been gardening or it might have been taking trips and suddenly the passion's not there. Uh, you, you sometimes even feel hopeless, like, well, what is there now? The passion was based on old human agendas. It's, it's going away. A true spirit passion is going to enter into your life at the appropriate time. You can't force it, you can't manufacture it, but it will enter into your life. So this passionless time that you have is a time to breathe and to do some other things we'll talk about in just a few minutes. But also often <clears throat> so much of people's passion is created in response to something, something they had to do, even karmic. And once again, if you, if, if you lose that karmic connection, that reason that you had to do something, suddenly your whole idea, your whole sense of what is important completely changes, completely evolves. And we'll just we'll go through a couple others uh, of the symptoms quickly and just see if you identify with any of these. Uh, crying for no apparent reason. No reason. You, just, you might be driving in your car, sitting watching television, and you just feel like crying and you don't know why. Uh, related very closely to that is a, is a feeling of deep inner sadness and you don't know what it is. And so often people have this deep sadness and it kind of freaks them out. And particularly they go talk to other people and they talk to uh, um, professionals who, who unfortunately the, uh, the psychiatric and uh, the psychology professions don't understand the difference between a spiritual awakening and just conventional uh, emotional or, or depression. depression. Yeah, they don't understand the difference. So. So they go talk to somebody about this deep inner sadness and, and of course they don't get the appropriate um, uh, information back. Well, and when you look at all this, these, these, these would all easily be things that people would associate with depression if they don't have a, a sense of what's going on in really truly inside of you. Absolutely. And uh, other symptoms of awakening, unusual sleep patterns, uh, bizarre, intense dreams, the whole nighttime thing, you know, from the time you go to bed to the time you wake up, tossing and turning at night, or dreams that where you wake up in a cold sweat or screaming. These are also very, very common symptoms of awakening. Another one, physical disorientation, uh, feeling dizzy, feeling um, suddenly that you're not really sure where you are. It's, it's not that... Uh, it's not that you're going crazy. What's really happening is you're starting to walk between the worlds. You're starting to open up beyond the mind. And for periods of time, there's a, there's a definite physical disorientation or a feeling that, well, you wonder if you're really fully here. Um, another one, of course, that we'll talk about more in just a moment is depression. Um, and I question whether this is really depression. I wonder if there's another name that that uh, we can have for this because it's not like typical depression, but let, let's come back to that in a moment. But I want to mention one final common symptom that uh, that people have. 
And this is, this is one of the most challenging of all, but it's the, a longing to go home, a desire to basically leave the physical body, uh, leave this lifetime, a feeling that maybe you're being called home or at least a feeling that you just don't want to stay here anymore. That's a difficult one because the closer you get to feeling and experiencing the God within, there is something that says, hey, what am I doing here on earth? Uh, you it's part of the process to sense that. Oh, absolutely. And, and starting to feel like maybe I'm done. Maybe I don't need to incarnate anymore. Maybe I've fulfilled my contracts or my agreements for this lifetime. Maybe I just want to be back in the arms of, of spirit, of, of spirit within. This is, this is a very, very common thing. And then people start to think that they're, they're suicidal and it's not, it's, it's suicide tends to be very dramatic or emotional or, or very sad, but this is more of just a desire to go home. Linda and I want to share with you tonight that you are going home and you can do it in your physical body. You can do it in this lifetime while you are here on earth. Going, uh, going home is perhaps not the appropriate term because home yourself is coming to you. You don't have to go somewhere else. So if you've had this feeling, you've had even guilt about wanting to leave, take a deep breath. You're here okay. Home is coming to you. So you're changing. We're all changing from being humans to becoming divinely aware humans. At times you're going to feel like you're being turned inside out. At times you're going to feel like you're going crazy. And you're actually not. You're just going through uh, a spiritual awakening. You're okay. And that's sometimes hard to imagine when... When, you, when you're actually walking through this and discovering this. But you're okay. And that's, that's the biggest challenge is to try to always be clear about that. It's okay. You know, so many things are happening. You, you literally are expanding beyond the mind. You're re rewiring all of your energy systems and the way they flow. And it, a couple more important points. You're, you're really bringing a lot of old issues, I guess what you would call karma, or old wounds or things that have been suppressed for, for lifetimes, wounds and issues, you're bringing these to the surface. Stuff that's been hidden for a long time is coming to the surface. It's sometimes overwhelming. The reason it's coming to the surface is it's being released. Those, those issues are actually being released and the energy that was contained within them is being transform back into pure energy to serve you in a new way. So while we, we sometimes call these aspects, so sometimes it seems like these aspects, these old issues and wounds are just going, going crazy. They're actually, they're actually coming to the surface to be released. And you know, and it's like the more attention you give them, the more drama you give them, the, the, the more they tend to stick around. This is the time to absolutely trust yourself. And then we'll get into some um, points in just a moment here. This is also the time that you're integrating your aspects. Your aspects are everything from... Um, All the parts of you. Parts of you from past lives. Aspects could be from this lifetime. They could be wounded aspects or, or aspects that are highly functional. But all the aspects are really releasing the structure or the identity that they've had of themselves. They're releasing that so they can come back home and integrate with you. So this is a good time before we get into the, uh, some of the last points. This is a good time. Let's all take a good deep breath right now. Linda and I travel all around the world, meet tens of thousands of people who are going through awakening. It is a natural process. It's a beautiful process. And it's a time when you're coming to get to know, you're coming back into connection with the spirit that you are. So I guess the question is what to do. You're going through awakening, what to do? Well, a couple of points. Trust yourself. 
And that's perhaps the easiest said and the hardest to do. But trust yourself. You are God also. You're going from, uh, from the identification with yourself as a, as a human into the reconnection with yourself as a, as a true spirit in, in human form. Can you trust yourself? Uh, nobody else, no other book, no guru, no angel, no teacher, but can you absolutely trust yourself? It's challenging because the mind clicks in and it comes up with all sorts of excuses why you shouldn't. But that's a time to take a deep breath and absolutely trust yourself. Wow, and isn't the mind in fact threatened by this? The mind, I, I don't want to say is threatened, it's, it's on high alert, it doesn't understand. It's been basically programmed to defend and protect and it doesn't know what's going on. But when you trust yourself, it's going to put your mind at ease. It will stop being so protective and defensive and it will then open up its um, energy flow so the process happens much more naturally. The other thing, uh, much more practical thing, is to do a lot of breathing. Another important thing for me anyway is to ground myself in nature. I, I like going for a walk in nature, just being, just feeling dirt. Uh, physical exercise helps to get a lot of the inner energies moved out, to keep them in, you know, in a rhythm, keep them from getting stuck. This is really actually not a lot of, not a time to get into other systems other than if it's something that you feel you're creating. It's real easy to get trapped in yet another, uh, another religion, another method, another practice, another routine. And it actually is a, a big distraction. It's a big distraction and part of you feels good. It's like, yes, I'm, I'm running around my house five times a day wearing a purple uh, suit and chanting in a certain way, but it's actually a distraction. Uh, try not to get into those mental activities. A lot of people we know start going through awakening. They actually stop reading spiritual material for, for a while or, or forever because they want to be in their own experience. They, they want to feel within rather than all this outside stimulation and all the outside words. In other words, take time to be with yourself. One more important point, and again, we could talk for a long time about it, but if possible, stay off the, the, the medications, stay off the the mind medications, the psychotropic drugs, the psychiatric medications. Depression is is something that people feel they're going through when they're going into awakening. It's really not depression. We're, we'll talk about it more in our next session. Uh, we've got about four minutes left. The medications uh, that that are often prescribed are often prescribed by professionals who really don't understand the difference between awakening and some of the other what you would call mental imbalances. Now Linda's got her mouth wide open looking at me. I'm not talking about people who are already on them. That's that's something else. I'm talking about if you're contemplating, if possible, try not to get on them. First of all. This is fact that people who are taking these type of um, mind medications, depression medications, end up having a higher incidence of suicide than people who aren't. That's Second, a proven study fact. That is a proven fact. Secondly, Tobias said a number of years ago that these medications literally take a blanket, like, uh, like, like not literally, but are like a blanket or a cold, wet blanket on your awakening process and they they flatten it they they destimulate it the ups and downs that you experience during awakening are actually natural it's a rhythm that will eventually allow the process of awakening to unfold in its fullest the moment you start taking the medications it suppresses it suppressed energy comes up somewhere sooner or later 
uh, and again, in our follow-up session, we'll talk more about some of the, the things you can do, but do try to stay off the medications. If you're already on medication, you should talk to your, your doctor about, about your medication and what, what you can do, but you should never just go off your medication without speaking to your physician. Okay, so Linda wanted to throw in that disclaimer for medical purposes. Yes, but I do. Thank you. But uh, anyway, the medica medications um, are often prescribed by counselors who don't understand and are often for a symptom that's very different than what you have. So the question is, as we come to the end of our session, what's the difference between a spiritual awakening or just plain going crazy? We're going crazy, which would include things like psychosis, neurosis, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, and the list goes on and on, are often the result of a trauma that disconnects you from your source. Something deeply traumatic happens in your life. You start d disconnecting even more from your source, from the God within. This causes psychosis. Eventually, you you know, the further you get from the source within, the more neurotic or psychotic or depressed you become. So this is typically what typical going crazy uh, happens. The spiritual awakening is different. Spiritual awakening is often the feeling of what we would call depression, the world being turned upside down, a loss of passion. This is the result of releasing the tight grip that you've had on your human identity. So the spiritual awakening, it is like a loss. It's the loss of the human, the connection with you've had with your human identity. But what's happening is as you release that grip on who you thought you were, you start to understand who you really are. You recreate or reconnect with your source and spirit. Typical uh, going crazy, typical mental imbalance is the result of trauma that disconnects you from your source, from the source within. Spiritual awakening is quite different. It's actually releasing the grip that you've had on your human identity so that you can discover and experience who you truly are. And this is the big difference. I think there's a lot of confusion about depression, about anxiety, and about the loss of passion for people who are awakening. They confuse it with the more typical mental imbalance, but, but what's really happening here is you're letting go of the grip on the human identity. I see that our time is up, unfortunately. We could talk about this for hours and hours, so let's do that. We're going to schedule a special uh, either 90-minute or two-hour session in August. We'll do it on the Crimson Circle um, webcast on the Crimson Circle website. So we'll be happy to send you a notification. Just send us an email at speak.angels at gmail.com so we can let you know the date and time. We'll follow up and talk more about depression. We'll talk more about spiritual awakening and we'll take your questions. Uh, with that, remember also that uh, tonight, if you go to our website, there's about four free products you can download and listen to or read. And that's at www.crimsoncircle.com backslash free. www.crimsoncircle.com backslash free. Well, Linda, I am amazed at how quickly the time went. Um, and uh, I feel like we had to rush through what, what's a huge topic, but hopefully people around the world listening in are either nodding their heads going, now I understand what's been happening to me, or the people around the world listening in saying, I know exactly what that was like. How can I become part of getting this message of the awakening spirit out to other humans? That's what the Crimson Circle is about, and that's why We'd love to get to know you more. We'd love to put together our ideas with your ideas on how to let the millions and millions of Americans, millions and millions of people all around the world 
who are going through a spiritual awakening, but they have no idea of what's happening to them. How do we get how do we get this important information out to them to reassure them? You're not going crazy. You're just going through a spiritual experience. So with that, we'd like to say good night to everybody, or good morning, depending where you are in the world. It's been a it's been a real pleasure being with you here. Thank you and good night.